Hi, my name is Yulon Lin, and I'm a developer advocate for Data Studio. Community visualizations augment the kinds of charts and visualizations that you can add to your Data Studio dashboard. In this video, we're going to talk specifically about the configuration file. This is the file that defines how your user can interact with a community visualization. Quick vocabulary note. When I say you in this video, I'm going to mean the visualization developer. And when I say user, I mean the person who is loading the visualization into a Data Studio dashboard. Back to the configuration file. There's three key parts to the Data Studio community visualizations configuration file. There's a data, style, and interactions part. Let's start with the data section. When you define the data part of your configuration, what it actually does is define what shows up in the data half of the property panel in Data Studio. So here I've screenshotted that part of the property panel. But how does this translate into the property panel, or how do I define it? If you look at a data element, it defines each individual section where you can load data into your visualization. So there's an ID, there's a label that's rendered to the end user, there's a type, there's options, and different types have different options. There's three types of data elements. You have dimension and metric elements, which render in the property panel as places where you can load a dimension or a metric into your visualization. But there's also this third type, a max results type. So this is the max results data element. The type is max results, and it defines the max number of rows that Data Studio will return to your visualization. If you don't define this, Data Studio will actually return 2,500 rows max to your community visualization. How do these data elements then fit together into the whole data part of your config? So the data config structure actually consists of a list of data sections. So each data section has an ID, a label that is rendered in the property panel as a heading for a group of data elements. And then you also define a list of data elements that belong to this data section. And so a data config can actually have multiple data sections defined. The next thing we'll talk about is the style section. Right? This is where you can change the styling of a visualization. And in order to pick what renders in the style section for your community visualization, you have to define different style elements. So here's a sample style element. You have an ID, which defines how your visualization code is going to access this data later on. You have a label, which renders as a tooltip, a type, which defines the type of style selector that is rendered. So in this case, I've defined an opacity selector. You can also have a checkbox. You can have different color selectors. All of these can be found um, in the reference section of our documentation. And then you can also define a default value. Before the user has selected anything, what is the default of this particular style section? What does the style config overall look like? Similarly to the data config, you have style sections that then group style elements together. So you have an ID, you have a label that says, this is the header for this grouping of style elements. And then you have a list of style elements. And again, you can have multiple style sections within the style config. The last thing we're going to talk about is interactions, right? whether or not this checkbox that says interactions apply filters shows up in your property panel. And the way you define that is through defining this interaction element inside of your config. So this interaction element has an ID and it has a list of supported actions, right? So if you have supported actions is a list with this enum filter, the apply filter checkbox will show up and your community visualization will be able to act as a chart interaction filter. And the interaction config is a list of these interaction elements. Unlike the data and the style configs, though, there's no intermediate section grouping. It's just a list of interaction elements. So in this video, I've talked through the three sections of a visualization config. You have data, style, and interactions. These define the parameters by which your user will interact with your Data Studio community visualization. Thanks for watching, and I hope you continue to build cool visualizations.
To learn more, visit developers.google.com slash data studio slash visualization. When you build something cool, share it on social media using the hashtag data studio devs.